Hola y bienvenido a aprender inglés con Reza y Craig. Hello Reza. Hi Craig. How's it going? Pretty good, pretty good. I think first we should introduce ourselves. Good idea. So um, my name's Craig and I'm an English teacher here at the British Council in Valencia. And I'm originally from London. And my name's Reza. I also live in Valencia and work at the British Council. And I come from Belfast. So let's begin with our first spot, which is Grammar Focus. Reza, over to you. Craig, you live in Valencia, right? I do. It's famous for rice. They grow rice here and they eat it a lot, right? Mm-hmm. Do you like rice, Craig? I love rice. Not all rice dishes. I don't really like arroz caldoso, arroz a banda, mm -hmm. but I love paella, especially with chicken. Yeah. And can you cook any rice dishes? I don't cook it. I just eat it. Do you cook other things? I mean, how often do you cook anything at all? Beans on toast sometimes. Maybe I'll have um, something fried or a sandwich. But do you cook like every day? Or? No, Once a week? Or? No. Okay. Only when uh, I have to. You don't really like household chores then, do you? No, no, I don't clean. I don't do anything in the house if I can help it. And what about the washing up? Do you always do the dishes? No, we have a dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> On the rare occasions when you do cook, Craig, do you usually make a mess when you cook? Always. I make a mess when I cook. I make a mess when I make a salad, when I make a sandwich. Uh -huh. So you're a you're a messy person, right? I'm a messy person in the like kitchen. Like me, yeah. You too. Yeah. I really try to be tidy about the house, but I just can't keep things in order. Mm. Do you think it's possible for a person to change? I, I want to be tidier. I don't know if we do change. I think maybe uh, we can change our habits. Yeah, that's possible. When I go to stay at my mum's house next Friday, I'll be tidy. She's very, very house proud. Your mum, what does house proud mean? House proud, that means it's very important for her to have her house looking neat and tidy and clean. It means a lot to her. She's house proud. Because proud is orgulloso. That's right. House proud, orgullosa de su casa. Right. My mum's very house proud as well. Oh yeah, I've, I've seen your mum's house. It's spotless. So as I say, as I say, Craig, I'm off to Ireland soon to visit my house proud mum. Right. And she's not going to let you make a mess in the house. No, no way. No way. I'll do a bit of housework, you know, but generally she likes to do it. She just doesn't trust me. So what do you call words like that where house is one noun and proud is, is another, mm -hmm. is an adjective and they're together? Compound, compound nouns? Well, house proud would be a compound adjective. Compound adjective. Because it's describing my mum. You can have a compound noun as well, like... Football. Everybody's heard of football. Mm -hmm. Everybody understands it. Actually, it's a compound noun. You've got the word foot, you've got the word ball. Stick them together and you've got football. football. My mum's house pride. House pride. Stick them together. You've got house pride. Craig, have you noticed there that I asked you lots of questions about uh, housework and what your mum's like and you were asking me what my, my mum's like and things yeah. like that. Did you notice that most of the verbs were present simple? I did. Mm -hmm. Do you know why? Is it because it's something that people usually do like as a habit? Your mother uh, is, uh, she's house proud on a regular basis. She yep. does the cooking, she cleans the house, she does the cooking, uh, right. sorry, does the shopping. So when you speak about things that are habits, you mm -hmm. use the present simple. Exactly. That's one use of it. I also said that I'm a messy person and you're a messy person. That's a characteristic. That's something that never changes. It's not a habit. It's a state which will never change. That's also present simple. I see. A messy in Spanish is... Messy is um, the opposite of tidy. So my mum's really tidy around the house. She's house proud. I'm the opposite. I'm messy. I... I don't care where I put things and I never keep things in order. I'm the opposite of tidy. You make a Messi. mess. Haces un lío. I make a mess. That's right. And I don't do much housework. Uh, I told you I'm going to stay at my mom's house next Friday. Did you notice I said uh, when I stay at my mom's house next Friday, I'll be tidy. Mm -hmm. I said when I stay at my mom's house. That's a present simple. 
I stay, me quedo. But the meaning is actually future. You can use the present simple as a future meaning if there's a time with it, like next Friday, when I stay at my mom's house next Friday. Mm -hmm. By the way, my flight to Ireland leaves uh, very early in the morning. I'll have to get up about five o'clock. That's also present simple. My uh -huh. flight leaves. You spotted it. That's right. It's next Friday. It's future, but it's present simple because it's a timetable. A timetable, you know, for buses, trains, uh, school, timetable. Un horario. So I can say my lesson starts at half past six. That's right. Even if your lesson's in the future. Okay. Are there any other uses of the present simple apart from habits and timetables? Uh, habits, timetables, characteristics. I said to you at the beginning, I think that Valencia is famous for its rice. They grow a lot of rice. They eat a lot of rice. It's a characteristic of Valencia. Characteristic. Mm -hmm. I also said my mom's house pride. That's a characteristic of hers. Um, and as you said before, things that are always true. Water boils at, is it 32 degrees centigrade? Mm, don't know. 100 degrees centigrade. 100 degrees centigrade. 100 That's degrees easier for me to remember. No, centigrade. <laughs> when you heat water, it boils. That's it. Always. Continuous. It's always going to happen. Can't change. The sun rises in the east, sets in the west. Always. Present simple. Rises, sets. <laughs> Okay. okay, moving on then to um, the pronunciation spot. So the, I wanted to talk about the uh, commonest sound in English. How do you feel, Reza, when you wake up Monday morning and you think of work? What sound do you make? <sighs> with, close like with me, it's more like... Uh, uh, you wake up in the morning, you're thinking of work, or you're thinking of your English lesson, and the sound you make is... Uh. So that's the commonest sound in English. It's called the schwa. For example, un boligrafo is a pen. Un libro is a book. Then there's mother, sister, brother, teacher, a computer. And very often words like prepositions and um, articles in the middle of a sentence have this sound a uh, which is a weak form, un sonido débil. Like, like two, when people say, I'm going to the shops, they say exactly. to. Exactly, uh -huh. exactly. I'm going to the shops. In normal speech, I'm going to the shops. So you have t and the, two schwas. A cup of tea. So of, a cup of tea. Not of, but of. Okay. So it's always a weak sound then, the schwa. It's never a strong sound. Yeah, it's a sound without effort. Sin esfuerzo, just a, a book, mm. a cup of tea. Yeah, I've heard Spanish people mispronounce schwa because it's almost like they make too much effort to pronounce it and it doesn't sound like a native speaker. They say, ah, cup of tea mm -hmm, exactly. instead of a cup of tea. Because they put equal stress in Spanish on each syllable. In English, it's uh, stress time, so we change the stress on different syllables. Yeah. Another one, banana. Have a banana. Mm -hmm. Not have a banana. <laughs> have a banana. <laughs> Lots of schwas. Reza, have you got a hot tip for us this week? Well, Craig, we've talked about a few topics today and we've discovered some new vocabulary. Mm -hmm. As you know, it can be hard to remember new words and expressions. You and I have had to learn Spanish. Not easy. Some of you... us are still trying. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm still trying. Yeah. It's easy to learn a word and forget it in a few days, right? Mm -hmm. Well, when I was first learning new Spanish vocabulary, I used to write sentences, but with a gap, a space, un, un hueco. I didn't write the complete sentence. And the gap, the space was the missing word or words, expressions, that I just learned and I wanted to remember. Well, we see those all the time um, in textbooks and course books on the internet where you have a sentence with a, with a space that you have to write the missing word. So right. Isn't it this idea. Right, exactly. So you can make up your own. Or you can copy a teacher's or someone you've 
you've heard if you want, but hey, make up your own if you like. Let me give you an example, Craig. Earlier today, we were talking about my mum and how she's house proud. Now, imagine house proud was a new word for me. Okay, and I wanted to remember in a few days what house proud means. I might not hear it again, so it's going to be easy to forget it, right? So, what if I wrote down on a piece of paper? Number one. Reza's mom likes to clean and tidy her house a lot because she's very... So the missing word is... House proud. House so proud. I write on another piece of paper or the other side of the same piece of the paper, but out of sight, one house proud in an answer key. That's... I can write as many sentences as I like. Here's, a, here's another sentence. Imagine we wanted to remember the word messy, right? Messy. I'd think of football. The, the Barcelona footballer. <laughs> Lionel Messi. Lionel yeah. Messi. But Craig, I'm talking about the <laughs> adjective Messi that we were talking about, which means untidy, um, quite the opposite of house pride. We could write, both Craig and Reza don't tidy up much. They're... Messy. That's the word. So or I could say, look at my desk. It's really... Messy. Perfect. So we write the word messy on the answer key. That's number two. You can write as many as you like. Three or four to remember. Twenty if you've got time. Then leave them for a few days. That's the test. Because anyone can remember a word for a minute, half an hour, an hour. Leave it for a few days. Then come back to it and test yourself. That's a really good way to remember vocabulary. It's much better than just writing lists of words. You need the context to remember. That's a wonderful That's idea. And also I'd suggest that you choose words that you like because many mm -hmm. of my students write long lists of words, too many words. I say just choose six or seven or eight words from a lesson that you like, the words that you think you'll use, words that you want to learn. Not every single word. Just choose the ones you like. Right. A mess is easy to remember. Just remember the footballer. Yeah. So now we're going to collocate with Craig. I'm going to give you some popular collocations. For example, how do you say in English, Reza? Hacer. Hacer la compra. Oh, Craig, I know that's a trick question. I know that one. It can be make or it can be do. That's the thing. Well, with the shopping, it's probably do the shopping. But the problem is a fair in English sometimes make and it sometimes do. So one thing to remember, food and drink, you usually make. You make a sandwich, you make a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, you make a cocktail, you make dinner, breakfast and lunch. So food and drink you make. Business and money, which one is do, which one is make? Oh, I, I'm not sure. A bit of both, Craig. You can, you can do business. You can make money. That's it. You do business. Yeah. Is that right? You, yeah. yeah. You do business and you make money. How much money do you make is an American English way to say how much money do you earn. So in American English, you'd use make when you ask about somebody's salary. I make about 3000 a year. Profit and loss. Speaking about money, what do you think? Make or do? Make a profit or do a profit? Definitely make. Correct. Make a profit and make a loss. This year, our company made a loss. They lost money. Or this year, we made a huge profit. What about deal, Craig? Make a deal or do a deal? Make a deal. Make a deal with someone. How do you say that in Spanish? Hace un trato. Yeah. Make yeah, a deal. Travel. Let's make a deal. Another thing to remember when you physically create something, creas algo, like you make a table, it's usually make. If you make furniture, you're creating the furniture. You make a table from wood. When you mean like there's a, a physical product at the end of it. Correct. Okay. And finally, things in the house. Most things in the house you do. So you do the shopping, you do the cleaning, you do the washing up, you do the ironing, except, do you, do you know the thing that you make? I do. 
Work. Make the bed. Yeah, something yeah. I never do in the morning <laughs> is make the bed. So the one exception, I think the one exception, is to make the bed. Everything else in the house, you do. Did you make your bed this morning? I did. I always do. Next episode, we'll speak about more expressions with make and do. Reza, do you have a phrasal verb for us? I do, Craig. The phrasal verb for today is take up. Take up. Take up. You know, Craig, I have plenty of free time these days. I want to take up a hobby. Any suggestions? Well, you could take up fishing. Mm -hmm. That's relaxing. Do you feel stressed? I do, yeah. Take up fishing. Okay. So, take up a hobby means start, begin an activity that you haven't done before. Let's take up. Craig, I have friends who, who make model planes and ships and things like that as a hobby. But I don't want to do that because I reckon that hobby takes up too much space and time. There's another use of take up. Making models takes up too much space and time. Entonces, el mismo phrasal verb puede tener más que un significado. Oh, yeah. Most phrasal verbs have more than one meaning. So, we've had take up, begin or start a hobby or activity. Or, we've got take up space, take up time. Making model planes takes up too much space and time. It takes up, it uses, it occupies. That's another meaning of take up. And I suppose if you take up golf, you have to buy the golf clubs and the golf bag, which would take up a lot of space in your flat, especially if, like me, you had a small flat. Exactly, that's it. So you've just used take up twice in the same sentence with two different meanings. And they're both really common meanings. You'll hear them all the time. So is there anything you're seriously considering taking up? I'm considering taking up cycling. It will keep me fit, I hope. Yeah, it's healthy. That's a good idea. Especially mm -hmm. in Valencia because it's so flat. But you know, maybe I'll have to just wait a while because there's something else on my mind. You know, very soon an electrician is coming around to my flat to change the, the, the cables, the wiring, mm -hmm. los cables. Mm -hmm. I'm a bit worried. Apart from taking up lots of time, do you think this electrician is going to take up the floorboards in my house? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh -huh. It depends whether the original cables were under the floor. But he might have to take off some of the plaster. Uh -huh. in, uh -huh. What's plaster in Spanish? I can't remember. Um, escayola. Escayola. Yeah, to take off the escayola. Take off the plaster from the walls uh -huh. to get to the wires. But take up the floorboards? Probably not. I hope. So I'm glad to hear that. We've got the word take up there. The phrase of verb means lift, remove something. So hopefully the electrician doesn't have to take up. It's lift, remove, levantar. Exactly. My floorboards. But Craig says he probably will have to take off some plaster. Take off. Quitar. Remove. Remove. Quitar la escayola. Take off the plaster. Well, I think maybe we've taken up too much <laughs> of our listeners' time. <laughs> so this is possibly a nice way to finish our first episode. So thank you for listening. Thank you to Reza. And we hope to see you in the next episode. The music in this podcast is by Pitts. The track is called See You Later. Licensed by Creative Commons under a BYNC license at ccmixter.org Si quieres mandarnos un comentario sobre este podcast o una pregunta sobre la gramática, la pronunciación o el vocabulario de inglés, mándanos un email a mansionteachers.yahoo.es